Welcome to Washington, D.C. It may be the nation's capital, but to us, it's just home. From our parks, to our history, with those late night dance parties, to our vibrant community. So stay a while and join us as we discover the best of D.C. You're watching Pride in the City. Welcome to Pride in the City. What's going on? My name is Houston from iHeartRadio and Entertainment Chair for Capital Pride Alliance. Now, you don't need me to tell you that this has been one hell of a year, but in times like this, we still need to find joy. Still, we laugh. Tonight is a celebration of all things that make us smile in 2020. Even if you can't see it underneath this mask, we'll know that it's there. We want to take a bite out of your quarantine for a minute, and, and we want you to let yourself have a little escape. So we have a diverse set of talented comedians that will help you unwind and hopefully get you to laugh out loud. So before we start, we want to thank everybody here at Xfinity for their generous support this year and for hosting tonight's event in their beautiful flagship store in Washington, D.C. Now also don't forget to show your love for tonight's talented comedians. We'll be displaying each comedian's Venmo handle on the screen during their performance so you can show your support. You can also visit capitalpride.org donate to learn more while you're watching tonight's show. And also be sure to use hashtag still we laugh as you're watching along on social. We also have a limited number of still we laugh t-shirts available at the capitalpride.org website. So let's get ready to laugh with pride in the city still we laugh comedy special. said I'm doing this one mask off because I spent an hour on my makeup and you guys are gonna see it so <laughs> I've actually had a COVID-19 test and if you want to convince someone to wear a mask show them a COVID-19 test because <laughs> that is not fun what they do is they take this probe and they stick it all the way up your nose to poke your brain <laughs> I'm COVID-19 free, but now I have to relearn how to sew. <laughs> I'm so glad to be here. Um, I have been starved for LGBT media for quite some time. Uh, some wild things are going on, as m many of you know. A lady found herself a young man and gotten an entanglement. <laughs> of course, I'm talking about Lindsey Graham. Um, uh, Candace Owens made history as the first black Karen. Um, <laughs> There are people saying that Karen is a racial slur. That's why I say Kara and avoid the hard Ian. <laughs> Some of my comedy friends are not handling the COVID crisis well. Uh, they have quarantine beards. Um, I have a quarantine beard on my legs. Um, when I do shows, I like to do like cute pixie-ish, fairy-ish type makeup. From the waist down, I'm a satyr. Like, <laughs> I 
if you were to crawl between my legs right now, it would be like a car wash. <laughs> We have a revolution going on. They're taking down Confederate statues. Those are dropping like Game of Thrones characters. <laughs> yeah, I heard something pretty stupid. Uh, there was a debate about whether or not we should take down the Confederate statues. And this one person was like, you can't do that. That's part of our past. That's part of our history. And it's like, yeah, the Confederate army is part of our history. But how come that part gets a statue? How come that part gets commemorated? Could you imagine if Hillary Clinton came home one day and there was a big portrait of Monica Lewinsky on the living room? And she was like, Bill, what the hell? And he was like, this part of our history, baby. <laughs> Take it down. Why are you trying to erase the past? <laughs> oh my gosh. I miss performing in DC. Um, I do not miss driving to DC. It's awful. You ever see that movie, The Ring? That horror movie? That would never happen in DC. And here's why. For those of you who haven't seen it, it's about people who get a VHS tape, and they put it in, get an evil VHS tape, you put it in, it's a horror movie, everybody's stupid, right? <laughs> and uh, a ring appears, and when you see that ring, you get a call on your telephone, and when you pick it up, it's a creepy little girl, and she says, seven days. And then in seven days, the creepy little girl comes to kill you. Would never happen in DC. She wouldn't get to kill anybody. Here's why, because you'd get the tape, you'd put it in, you'd see the ring, you get the call, seven days. Then seven days would go by, and you'd get another call, hello, this is a creepy little girl from the ring. Um, I'm stuck going in a loop around DuPont Circle. <laughs> I'm gonna have to kill you some other time, this is bullshit. <laughs> So that's a DC problem. In Baltimore, where I'm from, the problem is more that the roads aren't that good. It feels like you're reading Braille with your car. You go riding with a blind person, you're like, what does it say? And they're like, it says you should have voted in the last election. Anyway, that is my time, and I thank you all so much. Hi, hello, hello DC Pride. How is everybody? Thank you for lying. I appreciate you pretending with me for a second, because we all know it's bad. We all know it's been the worst. Uh, but frankly, I've kind of gotten used to it. This is my first time really leaving my apartment in four months, and this has really been a learning experience in that I was a little bit made for this. I'm staying at home all the time. I can't have sex, watching a lot of anime, just talking to my friends online. This isn't an international crisis anymore. This is just my 10th grade experience. <laughs> Which is, I'm okay with that actually. 10th grade was good. I liked the 10th grade a lot. I actually came out of the closet in the 10th grade, gave it up for me, it's still pride somewhere. Not this time zone, obviously, but no, I like coming out of the 10th grade because that was somewhat recent. So it was a very progressive time. Some might say a little too progressive. I had some friends get a little too friendly. They think they got the whole experience. They figured out what was going on because they have that one loud cousin or they've seen all of Glee. They get the whole gay experience in one. Here's the thing, unless you're actually statistically possibly gonna hook up with someone who is also named Jake, you don't get the gay experience. You don't have to realize that someday a man with my name will walk into my home and I'm probably gonna have sex with him because what would I say? It's like, oh, hi Jake. You look good, Jake. That feel nice, Jake. 
Do you still get sad at night for no reason, Jake? Do you still feel bad about making your mom cry in the third grade, Jake? Do you still not really know how taxes work so you just put all the mail in one big envelope and send it to your dad's friend and you really hope you don't go to prison because you don't think you do that well in there? Jake? Anyway, I'm open to Jacob, so uh, if anyone knows anybody, please hit me up. I'm very ready for that. And I say I'm open in that I am in a relationship, but it is semi-open, semi-open in that when he asked me if I wanted to get back on Grindr, I looked at him and said, did I do something wrong? Have I hurt you in some way? The last time I got on that godforsaken place, the first thing someone messaged me was, you'd make a good-looking centaur. <laughs> We're gonna put all the assumptions about what I'm working with aside for a second. A centaur? Really? This is obviously like a 13th year mermaid boy situation going on here, not a centaur. So why don't you re-roll that D&D sheet and bring this fantasy to someone else's inbox, please and thank you. But that's the thing about being gay, like there's so many things you have to fill in on the app, like how tall are you? What do you weigh? Are you a bear or a twink or an otter or normal? Like what's the situation there and what's going on? And frankly, it should just all be fill in the blank. I would really just put it in that category like more of like a haunted baby doll situation going on here. <laughs> like weirdly defined facial features and hard hands and feet, but a soft squishy middle that you weren't really expecting. <laughs> Occasionally found in dumpsters and they will make a movie about me someday. That will be a scary movie but comes with like a lot of cute outfits. So like, check Toys R Us now. Where is my straight men in the audience? Not here? Okay, oh, we're pointing, we're pointing. Give it up for them, give it up for the straight men. They have everything, give it up for them too. Because you have everything, I wanna give you a little bit of advice. Um, women love this, they love painted nails on men. They adore it when I could still go outside and do stuff. Every cashier, every waitress, every bus driver always had something nice to say. In the before times, like 8,000 years ago when you could still go to brunch. I remember that? I don't. It's in the history books for the kids. Um, this waitress came up to me and she did that thing, you know, where she squats to establish dominance to look you right in the eyes and to let you know that she can fuck up your day with one spit in your tacos and you're never gonna fucking know. She gets down and establishes dominance, and she just says, I just wanna let you know, I think you're really brave. And it's like, because I got the salad instead of the tacos, is E. coli back? Are we doing E. coli too? Because that's two on one, I don't think I can take both of those. Um, and she's like, no, 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 no. I just think you're, you're breaking down gender boundaries. And it's like, oh, I see what we're doing here, okay. Happy Sunday. Here's the thing, folks, I'm not, Brave. Firefighters, brave. Astronauts, brave. God bless teachers, super fucking brave. I like bright and shiny colors and sparkly things. I am not brave. I'm as brave as your average toddler, except I shit myself half as much. <laughs> Twice as much if E. coli is back, so I do need to know about that so I can change my order in time. I've had a lot of time recently to reevaluate some things about myself and really reflect and contemplate and Learn some stuff like, yes, my breath does smell like that when it's pushed back into my face by a mask. I should really do something about that. <laughs> or I should really manage my anxiety in better ways. One of the ways I've been sort of maintaining that is practicing politeness, cordiality, a lost art. I've been writing a lot of thank you letters, mostly to my weed guy. Nice, <laughs> nice, nice, nice hemp-based stationery. It's very good, very eco-friendly. It's kind of like, dear Adam, Weed. We're not on the last name basis. Really a first name. Uh, thanks again. <laughs> weed joke. Uh, for the delivery last week. Uh, hope all is well with you and yours. <laughs> thanks anyway, apartment 509. Um, and I ran that joke by my therapist because again, we're managing anxiety. She looked at me and says, Jake, why do you need a weed guy? You live in an apartment, honey. You don't even have a lawn, let alone weeds. It's a thinker. It's a thinker. My name is Big Jake Lazier. Thank you for the time, everybody. Happy Pride. Thank you. Thank you. How's everybody feeling? That's what's up. Love the engineer. Um, 
I'm also from Baltimore. No. <laughs> I prefer to be introduced as a comic from Maryland because <laughs> it just, you know, it, it's Baltimore, you know what I'm saying? Like, well, really, I do it because there's always somebody after the show that comes up to me and they ask, you know, their little questions, and I like to play with them a little bit. So they're like, you know, well, what part of Maryland are you from? And like I said, I play with them. I'm like, well, why don't you guess? And they're like, well, are you from Greenbelt? And I'm like, fuck no. <laughs> they said, what about Hyattsville? Is that the same thing? <laughs> I said, what about Annapolis? Fuck no. <laughs> And then somebody asks, well, where are you from? And whenever you answer this question, everybody has the same response. So one lady's like, well, where are you from? And I'm like, well, I'm from Baltimore. And in unison, everybody in the room is like, oh. <laughs> like, oh, fuck you, bitch. This ain't no third world country. Like, fuck you. What you think this is? I mean, we got potholes and shit. We struggling, but we trying out here, bro. <laughs> I was like, God damn. If you can't tell looking at me, it's a strong possibility I might be something similar to a lesbian. <laughs> okay, all right, don't woo too much here. Yeah, I'll catch you outside, okay? Keep playing. <laughs> but um, I don't really think that I'm like the young lesbians that I used to hang with. I used to hang with people way too young to be around me and shit. I'm 41 years old, and I don't think I, no. I don't think I'm anything like these young lesbians. Like, I don't think I look like them, like the young black lesbians look like Lil Wayne and Future and shit. And the young white lesbians look like Justin Bieber. <laughs> I feel like I'm stuck in the middle of somewhere between like Rosie O'Donnell and T-Pain. Like I'm in the middle of that shit, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then I'm non-threatening, like I'm non-threatening as shit. Don't ever let anything you see on the outside fool you. I'm non-threatening, I am from the suburbs, okay? So if anything jumps off in here this evening, I will be on 295 before the first person swings. Fuck that. <laughs> I'm getting the fuck out of here. My best friend, she thinks because I dress like this, because of course people get their own picture of you or opinion of you, so she thinks because I dress like this, I'm supposed to be the one to handle her man problems, right? So she'll call me and she'll be like, bitch, you need to get over here. Tyrone is fucking up. You need to whip his ass. I'm like, bitch, what am I supposed to do? I got titties too. He gonna beat my ass too. What the fuck? Men give me the same kind of problems. They think because I dress like this, I'm trying to be a man. Not at all. Not as long as women get in the club free before 11. Hell no, fuck that. <laughs> I don't have $10, sir. I'm sorry. I don't have it. <laughs> and the security guys, they be bad as shit. They go to pat me down and they're like, boom, 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 boom. $10, homeboy. And I'm like, <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> Out there like, real ass bitch, give a fuck, buddy. <laughs> Twerking and shit. They be mad, man. They be so mad. I traveled a little bit, that was fun. Um, so far um, in my travels, my favorite trip so far was going to Jamaica. So the interesting thing, well the cool thing about going to Jamaica was being able to perform there. Interesting thing about Jamaica was I almost came back with a husband. <laughs> Shit got real. So like most people, I have a set of requirements for someone I would want to date. So one of my things is I need somebody that can cook. Like I want somebody that can make all that. I know no top ramen type shit, none of that. So when we got on the, um, the island, the lady who planned the trip said that she had somebody who was gonna cook for us. So I'm like, bet, I'm here for it. Thinking it's gonna be a woman gonna come out, she gonna burn it down, everything's gonna be good. No, instead, a little skinny guy comes out. He got long dreadlocks, net tank top, and a pair of basketball shorts and some flip flops. He keep waving his waist at me like this. <laughs> like, I'm gonna cook for you. I'm like, okay, sir, but keep your dick still, please. <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry. So, I don't remember him even going to the grocery store, for real. Like, I feel like he reached in the woods and pulled out a jerk chicken. But either way, the meal was good, so I was satisfied. Second thing is, I like somebody that compliments, because I like to give compliments. So over here, I'd be thick, chunky, BBW, big girl, all that other stuff, right? Not over there. So, lady who planned the trip said she wanted us to try the coconut water. Anybody in here had the real coconut water? Okay, cool. I had never had it before this trip. So we're walking down the beach, and this is my down the beach walk because I'm 41, that's all I got for you. So we're walking down the beach, and we get to this stand. And the stand looks like a wheelbarrow made out of green plywood with all these coconuts on it, okay? Now, I'm not a bougie bitch by far, but I had a few concerns about the stand. First of all, sir, 
Where are your gloves? <laughs> Second of all, how come none of your straws got wrappers on them? <laughs> Third thing, there's no hand sanitizer, there's no soap, no water. You don't even have that blue stuff you put the combs and the razors in at the barbershop. So how did you clean anything in here? But he picked up a machete and he cut my coconut open. When I saw the machete, I shut the fuck up. Instantly. So now, I got my coconut water, and they take a lime, a little lime, and they squeeze the little lime in the coconut water. The problem is not the lime. The problem is his hands look like he's been on Benning Road for like four weeks doing this. So now, I got this dirty lime, lukewarm coconut water. I gotta drink like it's Hennessy, cause he got a machete and I'm a bitch, okay? No problem. So I'm walking down the beach with my dirty lime, lukewarm coconut water. And I hear this voice, and the voice goes, hey girl. Now look at me, I don't think he's talking to me, so I kept fucking walking, fuck it. So I'm walking down the beach with my dirty lime, lukewarm coconut water, and I hear the voice again. And the voice is like, hey girl with the fire locks, I like your shape. Now I got an attitude, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm a thug, I was on the beach with Timberlands on, like who you talking to dog? fuck you. So I kept walking down the beach with my dirty lime, lukewarm coconut water, and I hear the voice again, and the voice is like, hey girl with the fire locks, I like your shape. Yeah, you strong body girl. I don't even know what a strong body girl is, but it turned me sweet as shit instantly. I was like, hey boo, how you doing? That's when he stopped his tractor across the street and he came over to me and that's when it happened. He stopped his tractor across the street, came over to me and he got close and his situation touched my thigh and my whole leg got hot. It's cause I'm allergic to it. <laughs> And at the same time, I realized something about myself. Not only was I allergic to the situation, but I was scared of his situation. <laughs> Not because I was scared of him, but the situation. Because simultaneously, when it touched my thigh and my leg got hot, at the same time, my booty hole got tight. <laughs> you can't tell me if your ass get tight, you ain't scared. Anyway, y'all, that's my time. I'm be on. Pride is love. It's also show-stopping, sticking together, glamorous, groundbreaking, action-packed, inspiring. Pride is everything. Just say Pride into your Xfinity voice remote to enjoy the largest collection of diverse LGBTQ shows and movies at home and on the go with the Xfinity Stream app. Pride is not just this month, but all year long. Thank you, thank you guys. Everyone looks amazing, happy to be here. This is exciting, it's my first time out in the world. And I, that, I know, the only thing I wanna do is go home. Like that's <laughs> all I wanna do right now. It's just crawl back into my bedroom hall. That's all I wanted to do. I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I am bisexual, um, which means I am stuck between Jada Pinkett and Will Smith. That's what, <laughs> so if you ever see this, yes, I'm down to fuck. Um, I, I, I've been bisexual my whole life, literally since I can remember. I don't ever remember being straight, gross. Um, I, I grew up in white suburbia in the 80s, the only black bisexual Muslim girl. Yeah, when it wasn't as cool as it is now, right? <laughs> And I, I grew up, like I said, I grew up in white suburbia, so I know you guys are familiar with that phrase, kids are cruel, you've heard that before? Did you know that it's actually originated, originally from an indigenous term which loosely translates to white kids are fucking monsters? Did you know, did you guys, did you guys know that? No, yeah. Uh, being bi is very weird. Um, I, I, I'm married to a man now. Um, <laughs> But when I was out in the world dating last week, I um, <laughs> typically <laughs> date ladies. Uh, and But here's the weird thing, lesbians don't like dating bi women. I found that out. I, and, and I'm typically mostly attracted to lesbians, like full on, like the gayer the better. Ugh. And uh, the last young lady I was dating literally said into my face, when she found out that I was bi, she said, Ew! Your vagina has been tainted with human man penis. <laughs> what? <laughs> Could you write that sentence down for me? Because I don't 
even understand it, but I was like, it's been tainted with human man penis, but it's organic, locally sourced, and homegrown. I don't understand. I thought you lesbians were into that, no? And it's way better for you than that GMO cock you have in your sock drawer, Morgan. Uh, <laughs> Another fun thing about being bi is that I unfortunately have a lot of straight friends because um, they don't know. And um, not because I'm in the closet, they're just oblivious. Um, <laughs> but they all, when they find out, then they're like, oh my God, I'm going to ask you all of my gay questions. Oh, I'm sorry, queries. Is that the right term, Frankie? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> my friend asked me recently, what does the IA stand for? I'm like, bitch, what are you talking about? LGBTQIA, why are you adding so many letters? I'm like, calm down, Jennifer, first off. Um, it's always a Jennifer, right? Always. Um, <laughs> first of all, I'm not personally adding all the letters, okay? So that's not how it works. <laughs> Secondly, the IA stands for Intelligence Agency because that's <laughs> how we so easily push our agenda. So. <laughs> Quarantine's been tough. Uh, my husband and I have been quarantined with a roommate. Um, and, and she's an animal. I don't know who raised her. Have you ever met like one of these millennial trash bags? Have you ever met one of those? Um, that's her. Um, I want to like steal her phone, break it, find out where her parents live, Google it, go to their house, and just beat the shit out of them. Like I want to understand why did you release this person into the wild? Like what? <laughs> were you thinking? Because she does the most wild stuff. Like, weed is legal in DC. So when I come home, I want some Fruit Loops, okay? I want my delicious fruity Fruit Loops. I come home one night from a show. I get the bowl, I get the spoon, I get the milk, I grab the Fruit Loops, I turn them over, and you know what I hear? <laughs> Do you know what that sound is? That's Fruit Loop dust. What kind of animal eats the last of the Fruit Loops and then leaves Fruit Loop dust? It doesn't have the respect to add a straw and a razor blade in there so I can chop it up and snort it and see if I still get that same delicious fruity flavor. <laughs> Sorry, I had a flashback. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's a complete lunatic. She, she also, uh, one night I'm out, right, this is not even a joke, I get a text. And she doesn't speak English, which is fine, but she only speaks hashtag? Yeah, trash bag. So <laughs> I get the text, and it's a selfie, because of course, and I look at it, and it's her and my husband snuggled on my sofa, watching the TV that I got for my birthday under the blanket that my dead grandmother made me, and she captions it, hashtag, movie night. <laughs> in a word that doesn't have any E's, okay? <laughs> so I sent her back a hashtag just to make sure she could understand. You guys should follow it. It's super easy to remember. It's probably still trending on Twitter. It was a uh, hashtag, bitch, I don't think you know how black women work. I'm gonna fuck you up when I get home. I play a lot of shit, but I'm gonna play with my husband home. You see that spare in my closet? Wakanda forever, bitch. The one thing we did right, I will civil rights march on your bitch ass. When I get home, ho. <laughs> it's really easy to remember. You can just Google that. Here's the wildest thing she's ever done. One night I come home excited. Why? Because my husband's out of town. If you sleep with someone every night, the best gift they can give you is to not be there. So I get home late. I'm excited. I go in my bathroom. I take a sexy shower. Ladies, we've all done it, sitting on the toilet naked, drinking wine. And so when I finish crying, I go slide into bed. And she's in my bed, asleep, wearing my Guns and Roses t-shirt. I was like, Welcome to the jungle, bitch. <laughs> We've got fun and games. Now here's the craziest thing she's ever done, and you guys are gonna judge me. Keep your judgment for someone who cares. Um, she's never paid rent. Not one time. And here's the worst part. Every time I confront her, she uses the same bullshit excuse. Every single time I'm like, girl, where's your rent? She's like, mommy, stop calling me your roommate. I'm only 12 years old. I 
I cannot help you and broke ass daddy with your bills. I love Frankie and French, you guys have been amazing. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh. Hi everybody. I'm so glad that there's an everybody. I'm not used to this at all. Also not used to this sweet lounge. Thank you to the Xfinity store for letting us use it. Because I don't know if you know this about stand-up comedians, but we will literally perform anywhere. <laughs> and uh, so I'm just going to let you know why this is better than the worst slash best slash probably worst again spot where I've ever performed. It was in a basement. And by the way, not a comedy cellar. Um, <laughs> A fucking basement, guys. <laughs> and that basement was below a jazz club. So that meant I got to hear a bunch of entitled white male straight open micers tell lousy abortion jokes over a literal sad trombone. <laughs> So it was kind of great because after their uh, punchline, which was something like, and bitches, right? I'd hear wah, wah. <laughs> I miss that, I miss that basement. Um, I am one of those people that has been quarantining with a partner and yeah. Um, I did drag her here, so give her more applause than that. <laughs> Especially because we still love each other. Do you understand? <laughs> in fact, the one thing that's been tense in the relationship is that she does work for the news. Yeah, so at night, our sex, loving, caring, the dinner we make for each other, amazing. Conversations about her day, need a safe word. <laughs> Cause she'll say something like, so I had to look up Donald Trump's tweets today. And I'll be like, ah, strawberry. <laughs> oh, I, I, will, I will say this. I'm not gonna go too deep into uh, the tweets, but, for somebody to say that they think that if we do more testing, it means more positive cases, so that makes him look bad, that is someone who has been saying that about STD tests his whole adult life. <laughs> And to be fair, I actually get the rationale. It's coward rationale. I've had coward rationale. If I don't check my email, I can't get rejected from any more comedy festivals. <laughs> Comics get it. <laughs> oh man, I, um, I am one of those uh, unemployed people you've been hearing so much about, thank you. Yeah. Well, it's because I was a bartender. Yeah, in the before times. And uh, bartending and stand-up comedy, only two jobs I'm ever gonna have. Uh, mostly due to my complete lack of a resting bitch face. <laughs> I, I don't have one. I sure wish I did. Because it doesn't stop people from approaching me and saying ignorant shit. Uh, because I've got the other RBF, uh, I've got resting bartender face. <laughs> so instead of people coming up to me and trying to encourage me to smile, I have people coming up to me to complain about their divorce. Oh, it's okay, I give them gin, it's fine. <laughs> um, 
preferably, I was, I was gonna like name a type of gin, but whatever, you all have your types. <laughs> but, but here's the thing, I am jealous of these women with the, with the resting bitch face. There are opportunities available to them that will never be available to me. I can never be a lawyer. <laughs> In DC, guys. <laughs> that also makes it very hard to talk with half of my immediate family. Um, I can never be anybody's boss. No one will take anything I say seriously. Hell, you know what? I can also never effectively ask to speak to a manager. <laughs> because here's the thing about the Karens that ask to speak to a manager. They're intimidating. If you work in the restaurant industry and when they do that, then I need to speak to a manager. Those bitches are about to get free food. <laughs> if I, with my resting bartender face, were to go up to somebody in an establishment and say, excuse me, I'd like to speak to the manager, the response would be, oh, you must be looking for a job. Um, <laughs> manager's not available for you right now. <laughs> just, just go to our website, <laughs> okay? www.yourfateissealed.com. <laughs> um, but because I have been uh, unemployed since March, I have been receiving the unemployment and also the unsolicited advice. Yeah! It didn't go away! <laughs> And my favorite one that I've heard has been beggars can't be choosers. That's right, not only is it bitchy, it's false. <laughs> Have you ever offered a homeless guy a gluten-free muffin? <laughs> because I have, and he chose to throw it in the trash. <laughs> All right, thank you guys, I'm Valerie Pascal. <laughs>
If you're not familiar, Cracker Barrel's a southern restaurant. They sell southern food. But the thing you should know is it's the tackiest place you can imagine. If you're having trouble imagining it, imagine like Jeff Sessions' basement. <laughs> Got me some well-read people here. I was doing a show with some 17-year-olds in the front row, and it was like Jeff Sessions. <laughs> and I get it. They're young. When you're young, you don't know who all the cabinet officials are. They're so young, they probably think Condoleezza Rice is some kind of, I don't know, hipster nickname for quinoa. <laughs> you can like hear them go, but is it gluten-free? <laughs> it's like, well, it's not cruelty-free. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so Cracker Barrel, and uh, so Cracker Barrel has all the amenities you expect in a good southern racist basement, y'all. Mounted deer heads over here, farm equipment over here, Ku Klux Klan robes over here, the whole nine. That's right, the whole Little Rock nine. If you didn't get that joke, it's about school integration and black history. I'll forgive some of the white people for not getting it since it's no longer February. <laughs> They've had it good for a long time, guys. Chill out. I <laughs> uh, worked at Cracker Barrel for several years as a waiter, and as a waiter you get dumb questions all the time. My favorite was, um, so, uh, what kind of Mexican are you? <laughs> what kind of Mexican am I? Well, I'm the Filipino kind. Um, so I'm Asian. Um, very little applause for being Asian, interesting. Uh, I didn't realize this crowd was so pro-gay, anti-Asian. Just so you straights know, this is what it feels like to be on Grindr. <laughs> pro-gay, anti-Asian. And I really am Asian, I'm not just Asian for the purposes of this set. And you can believe that I'm Asian because I was born in a fortune cookie. <laughs> and I know what you're thinking. Was there a fortune inside? This, and the answer is yes. It said, yes, he's gay, but at least he's not a girl. If you didn't laugh at that joke, I think that means you support China's one-child policy. <laughs> It's okay if you do. Personally, I support a zero-child policy. <laughs> I want to move to a place where everyone is above 18 and there are no children. I think it's called Seattle. <laughs> yeah, if you want to move to a child-free utopia, your only options are the Pacific Northwest or prison. And personally, I think the space would do well in both. My dad loves that joke. Um, it's funny because he's a prison guard. I know, bad political climate to mention that. Uh, yeah, I, uh, my dad's uh, really supportive of my sexuality, but at times he's too supportive. Um, recently he was calling me on the phone and said, um, Kevin, they're throwing a prom for the LGB, G, B, Q, R, S, T. I was like, listen, dad, I appreciate you trying to remember and pronounce and sound out every single uh, letter of the acronym, but for like expediency's sake, um, you can just love me, you know? <laughs> that's, all, that's all I'm asking for. And you know, like I said, he is a, a, a prison guard, and so I don't even watch porn anymore. I just call him up. You know, Dad, <laughs> tell me what happened in cell block D. Any cavity searches? <laughs>
Does, has anybody ever seen The Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt? Yeah, okay. I've, I've never watched it because I'm afraid it'll hit a little too close to home. I was raised in a Christian fundamentalist cult, okay? No TVs, no secular music, no computers. Women had to wear skirts below their knees and there was no contraception. And then we were homeschooled and then I was shipped to Bible college so I could learn to become a preacher. I did not become a preacher. I did the next best thing a gay kid could do. I started a southern gospel music group and traveled the world singing songs about heaven. <laughs> and if you don't know what southern gospel is, just imagine a banjo and a harmonica have sex. <laughs> and the baby is Jesus. Which is why I believe Mary was a virgin, because with a harmonica, there's only blowing. And with a banjo, there's only fingering. Needless to say, growing up in that environment, I did not find it easy to tell my parents I was gay, so I didn't. <laughs> they know now! <laughs> my mom found out on Mother's Day at Disney World, okay? And I wish Mickey had been there to help me because my mom freaked out. She's like, I can't believe you're gay. And Mickey could have said, well, we are in the Magic Kingdom. Why don't you just go ahead and use your imagination? And, uh, <laughs> she says, which one of you is the woman in the relationship? Uh, we're both dudes, that's why it's gay, Mom. <laughs> and then she says to me, well, you're the least gay of all your brothers. And I'm like, uh, I'm sucking dicks. What are they doing? <laughs> she goes, you know what I mean. You drive a pickup truck and you wear cargo jeans and flannel shirts and you don't do your hair before you leave the house. I'm like, hold on. You think I'm a lesbian? <laughs> Speaking of lesbians, I have eight sisters. I know, eight. Oh my God. And I distinctly remember, I'm not saying any of them are lesbians, but I distinctly remember having a conversation with all of them when we were still in the womb and the stork came in and she was like, hey, listen, y'all, I got some weird news. You are all gonna be delivered. <laughs> but guess what? He likes dicks, so one of you girls can't. <laughs> uh. Oh my God, I'm surprised uh, they didn't find out I was gay sooner because I was doing gay stuff at home. I, the gayest thing I ever did at home uh, was I took a banana to the shower. And don't ask me why I took a banana to the shower. I have no idea, I don't even know what I did with it. I was curious, all right? Curious George takes his bananas with him everywhere he goes and no one asked him any questions. <laughs> But I made a mistake, I left it behind and my mom found it. You know, she goes, who left a banana in the shower? And I freaked out, oh my God, oh my God. So I ran in and I'm like, oh mom, I'm sorry, I forgot to eat it. And you know why I didn't eat that banana. <laughs> and without missing a beat, my mom goes, well, you better eat it soon. It's getting brown spots all over it. <laughs> I also, okay, so there's also four brothers. I know there's 12 of us. My mom was like, I know, my mom was like a pest dispenser. <laughs> Every time you pulled her hair back, a little sweet thing popped out. <laughs> I told you they didn't believe in contraception. But my dad did have a vasectomy, okay? After six, and then they had it reversed because they were like afraid of interfering with God's will. And um, yeah, the last six were girls. So I <laughs> asked my dad, I'm like, um, did uh, the doctors fuck something up down there? Is it like a hot cold situation? Like you're only having girls now. He goes, that's not how science works. And I'm like, well, who's interested in science anymore? <laughs> this is the first time I've ever been interested in bleaching my asshole. It's because Trump says it cures Corona. So, uh, <laughs> oh my God. It was embarrassed going anywhere with my family because we drove a 15 passenger van and to add insult to injury, my parents thought it would be a really good idea to get those white stick figures and stick them on the back. All the way across, mom, dad, Jake, Jail, Joe, Jenna, Curtis, Luke, Kara, Adrian, Olivia, Winona, Laura, Gina, and I have no idea if I got them all, and I don't know if I messed up, but you'll never know. And, um, <laughs> but I loved going to the mall as a kid because it was my only chance to see the outside world. You know, it was my only chance to be gay. And it wasn't like I was going and looking at heels or purses because that would have been too obvious. No, man, I was like walking back and forth by the JCPenney men's underwear section, checking out the packages on the packages. You know? <laughs> Until I discovered Abercrombie and Fitch. And then, man, I'd go in front of that store like a hundred times. I get a boner. Good thing I was pushing a stroller. <laughs> My mom's like, don't you shop at Abercrombie and Fitch. They support pornography. So we were forbidden. But 
all of my friends, everyone I knew was wearing Abercrombie and Fitch. And so I devised a little plan. I'm like, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to get me an Abercrombie and Fitch thing. So it, it looked like I was on a drug deal. Okay. I snuck in there. A good thing that store is really dark. No one could see me in there. And I ran back to the one piece of clothing my parents wouldn't find. Because I did my own laundry. And I grabbed the pair of boxers and I ran up to the counter and I paid cash for it. And she's like, do you want a receipt or a bag? And I'm like, no. And I shut it down. And it worked. I got it home. And then me, I got it home. I was so proud that I have a pair of Abercrombie and Fitch boxers. No one's going to think I'm gay. And then I turned around and it was a special edition. Abercrombie and Fitch. It said, you are Abercrombie and Fitch across the back. And oh, it gets worse. I unfold it. I put it on. I'm looking at myself in the mirror. And right above my ass, right, right where the seam is, they had sewn it together. It says U R A B. And then it ended and it started with the Fitch. Only it, I T C H. You are a bitch. And that's how I knew I was gay. Hi, right, I'm Jake Jigger. Thank you all. Have a great night.